Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to a brand new edition of Fro Ballers Podcast Live at the Ennish Studios in central London, Ennish Restaurant, Covent Garden, to be exact. My name is Adi Shopeo Lajide, and I'm always joined by my brother, DJ Walls. Yes, sir. This is where we break down the hottest topics and headlines in the sporting world, but looking through the prisms of black athletes, sports players, sportsmen and women, ball players. This is where we break it down our own way and make sure we talk about our people and our successes. As always, if you've not hit the subscription button, hit that button right now. The more numbers we get, the bigger the platform becomes, the better we're placed to be able to support and promote our own people without waiting for others to do the same. Now, as you can see, this is the only podcast in the world where we're talking sports and food. Yes. We're live at Enish Restaurant this time. We're kicking it off with some fried yam and some hot pepper sauce. Walls, talk to me about this, man. Yes. So this is the, the signature um, fried yam. Yeah. With the hot pepper sauce, delicious. Yeah. And um, there can never be a good time to do this because <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria won and we are live on Ennis Radio. We're so live on Ennis Radio across the across world. Across the world. That's incredible. So, yeah, I'm quiet. I'm happy. That's fantastic. Since we chose this specific delicacy mm. of fried yam and hot pepper sauce. Yes. Let's talk about the hot pepper sauce in the semi-final matches that we watched today with Nigeria going up against, um, what's it called now? Uh, remind me, Nigeria and uh, what's the team South that we Africa. played? South Africa. Yeah. The Ivory Coast and DRC Congo uh, will pick on Nigeria first. Yeah. Um, Nigeria was going up against South Africa. Uh, a very strong team that has displayed incredible talents throughout this competition. Their attacking prowess has been noted. The control in the midfield has been fantastic. But more importantly, what their goalkeeper did in the last match by saving four penalties out of five has become revered not only in Africa, but across the footballing world. Initially, before we break down the match... What were your thoughts going into this game and how did you see this match panning out? I knew it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be the finals. It was going to literally be the finals. Yeah, because it was the finals before yeah. the finals. Yeah. So I, I was a bit shaky and we could see it in the first um, 60 minutes or so. Nigeria was just trying to play safe and we kept defending. And kudos to all our defenders. And um, I think this is the first time I'm going to give kudos to, uh, to, the, to the coach. I'll give him his flowers. He, he made the right choice, made the right substitutes, and um, they, all, they all played well. They all played well, even though before the end of the game, the, the old you know, problem, the old saga that came up with the penalty, I was literally, I was actually live broadcasting on Ennis Radio and... My face alone, I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, 98 minutes. So for some people that probably haven't seen the game, if you've been under the rock uh, up until now, um, what happened during the game was Nigeria took the lead, threw a penalty, yeah. a, a credible penalty, where Victor Osime had had the ball in a very dangerous area. He took on, like, three players and ultimately got hacked, hacked down yeah. in the box 18. And boom, penalty. The ever-present captain... Ekong, very confident, Confidence. walked up it. to the ball and, you know, was looking, was staring down the goalkeeper who had just saved four, four penalties, penalties out of five in the last match. Ekong kept his cool, didn't place it left or right, went straight down the middle yes. and scored the goal. Now, Nigeria was in a comfortable position, was leading, had no defensive shake, shaky moments. The goalkeeper... Uh, Juan Billy had, had Man of the match. one or two saves <laughs> before then. Yeah. But what now ultimately happened that completely threw everybody out was the ball was in the Nigerian box. There was a rough tackle made by a Nigerian player. I think um, uh, Lukman. Lukman picked the ball through a, a South African player's yeah. legs and the, the referee had said play on. He made a long pass. 
The ball got into the South African area. A mm. decent cross was put through to Victor Osime. Yeah. He scored. Well, yeah. He handled. He scored a goal. Nigeria celebrating around the world. It looked at that moment. Nigeria had qualified for the finals. Two goals up with maybe 15 minutes to go. Whilst the celebration was going on, the South African players decided to protest the goal, saying they there was a foul. There was a foul <laughs> that led to the pass that came into the yeah, South yeah. African half before Victor Osimhen scored. So the uh, video referees called the attention of the on-field referee to go and watch it on the screens and make a decision. And his decision was the worst nightmare for Nigerian fans around the world. He overruled Victor Osimhen's goal Whoa. and put the he took the ball back and called a penalty in favor of the South Africans. Now that was heartbreaking. <laughs> that was heartbreaking. The South Africans confidently took the ball and scored the goal, yes. putting Nigeria and South Africa one all towards the last moments of the game. Now, obviously, coming from such a disappointment of losing a goal and then conceding the goal, the South Africans were on the on the front foot. Yes, the game, they wanted to. They wanted to win it. They wanted to kill it off. They wanted to. But somehow, somewhere, the Nigerian team. God of football. <laughs> There's no God in football because I believe God, that God, God shows himself to every player. Well, that's the African in me coming out. So. <laughs> but somehow the Nigerians withstood the pressure and was able to take that match into extra time and ultimately penalties. Yeah. Now, you've heard me say it a couple of times already during this podcast that the goalkeeper on the other end of the pitch comes with high credibility of just saving four, four clinical penalties in the last match. So for me particularly, when the referee said the match was over and it was time for penalties, that was when I stopped watching the game. Because at that time, there was no way anybody could have convinced me that the Nigerian players were going to be confident enough to beat someone who looked unbeatable yeah. in his last match. But I was wrong. Because he didn't save one. The only penalty we missed was Aino's penalty that he kicked it. And he, African he, style? Yes. <laughs> Over the bar. Over the bar. <laughs> but our goalkeeper, our incredible Mwabali, saved two. And the other two, or at least one of them, he literally went for the ball. But he was unlucky. So the first one he saved, the second one is uh, that was when I started picking up more you know, confidence is okay. I think we can win this. Mm -hmm. I think we can win this. And and the almighty Kelechi and the man who has been I dejected, have, uh, yes, who hasn't had the opportunity to display his scoring prowess. We've called a mm -hmm. lot of people have called on the coach to select him. Yes, but the coach has refuted calls, saying he doesn't want to change a winning team. But he was the last man he to kick. Up because, and that's the most dangerous um, um, penalty to take, the last one. Because if you were not part it, of the game. Yes. You're not emotionally and physically warmed trust, into the match. Trust the Nigerians. If he had missed it. They will condemn they'd him. They'd be like, oh, why did you put him? Why did you use him? He hasn't played. Blah, blah, blah. So the confidence, I've always believed in him. On this podcast, I've always mentioned his name to say, I want to see him play. And today he stepped up um, and gave us the win. Absolutely. And I, I wish I'm in Nigeria right now because the How? party in Lagos tonight will be, will be crazy. Um, over the last couple of weeks, particularly the last couple of days, there's been a huge criticism on the part of the Nigerian government with how you know, the cost of living has been expensive and how people have been so critical of this new dispensation mm. that the struggles have become even harder. What does a win like this do <laughs> for morale of Nigerians looking forward to the finals on Sunday? I can tell you for a fact that at least 90% of Nigerians who, before this match, are thinking about the economy, the, um, the cost of living... But this win will literally take out those worries, at least for a few hours, mm. probably till tomorrow. I'm sure people are celebrating right now. All the bars, 
everywhere in Lagos that will be sold out in Nigeria. We saw the video of like hundreds of people marching and dancing to Uwabali's father's house. To go That's and celebrate. To go and in celebrate. River Street, in, in River, River State. State. I'm sure the palm wine, the Ogogoros will be out tonight. <laughs> so, and the pepper soup. Yep. <laughs> yes. So now, I've, I, I think I mentioned it one or twice on this podcast to say the only thing that has um, brought us together currently in recent years in, in, in Nigeria is music, music, Afrobeats, and, f- Afrobeat and football. And we can we, we saw it tonight. Absolutely. We saw um, the whole social media, every everybody is involved. Even the president is involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the beauty of football. That's the unity. And I I urge on the um, Nigerian government to now, you know, invest more in grassroots football, in music, because this is the only thing that unites us. Speaking about music, we had um I had just returned from Los Angeles, California, yeah. the Hollywood Hills. I was out there frolicking with the <laughs> celebrities and enjoying my life as best as I could. Uh, we had gone out there to support some of, in my opinion, the greatest musicians that have come out of our Africa, continent in yeah. the last 10, 12 years. Yes. Um, Boy, Brian Aboye was uh, performing, uh, being the first African to perform Live stage. at the Grammys, yeah. uh, nominated for four categories. Uh, David Do, first time nominee at the Grammy Awards, nominated in three different categories. Mm-hmm. We had gone to LA, um, super excited for what looked like uh, an amazing award oh, season. Yeah. For us, it was a great moment to put our flags down to yeah. represent African music, African pop culture in a way that. Los Angeles, Hollywood, I've never seen before. Mm. And I personally believe that, you know, the amount of noise and attention that we brought to, you know, Afro Beats and even to the Grammy Awards, which evidently after that night showed a 34% spike in viewership. I'm very confident that a lot of that came through either the continent oh, yes. or the diasporans who were looking to watch a representative in Burner Boy and hopefully see someone like David O pick up an award. But sadly, uh, the Nigerians left empty handed and um, the winner on the night was the young, beautiful, talented and gifted Tyler, Tyler. who represents South Africa, which added a little bit more spice yes. to the match between Nigeria and South Africa. Um, talk to me about now we see what football is doing. A couple of days ago, our loss and how we reacted to that loss also showed the emotions that Nigerians have towards these very great institutions in music and football. The thing is, uh, when it comes to music and football, it, 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 it's like the, uh, you know, the the first wife who helped you <laughs> <laughs> in life. <laughs> That's how emotional we are yes. when it comes to this. And we can all see that it also translates into the football. Yes. The loss, because I, I'll say for a fact that as Nigerians, we are sad losers. We don't... We don't th- we, yeah. I, I, I hold my hands up. <laughs> I was... I was fuming as I well. I was a shambolic <laughs> loser. Uh, I'm a Pan-Africanist. I've always supported everything African. For the first time in a long time, I identified as a Nigerian. Um, yeah. Shout out to my brothers, David O and, 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 uh, and Burner Boy for getting that out of me. And, you know, we... Even I had to take a seat back and look at Nigerians and be like... We're so, we, we were all out. We're poor losers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> even though we love, we love, we love Africa. We lot. love South Africa. We love South we love, Africa. But the fact that we just got beaten, <laughs> and we can all see it in football. Even before today's match, yeah. we all saw the social media was bombarded. Absolutely. I saved some memes or pictures that the South Africans did. Um, after this podcast, yeah. I'll start posting us as well. <laughs> Don't worry. So, well, congratulations to the Super Eagles. They're now in the finals. Nobody saw that coming yeah. at the beginning of the tournament. Um, but what we did see coming was a fantastic defense, <sighs> incredible backline, confident goalkeeper, um, a, 
a striker that was wanting to score goals. Mm. And now we have that opportunity. Fast forward a couple of hours, Ivory Coast took on uh, DRC. Yeah. And one of the, the, the most brilliant strikers of the last decade in Sebastian Haller yeah. scored a brilliant goal and has now led the Ivorian team who just by the, the, the whiff of their, their hair on Lock. their back Lock. made it <laughs> into the knockout stages, but now in have now gone into the finals. How dangerous is it playing a home team who mm. has come from the dead in the final? I think the finals on Sunday, I think it's on Sunday, it's right? It's on Sunday at 7.30 p.m. We will be one of the biggest in the in the if, history of, of African, African football. Absolutely. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. As a as a Nigerian, I believe we can win, but it's going to be tough because everything will be against us that day. Absolutely. The and crowd, the even the referee because And again, one of the most difficult things is the fact that we've defeated them once. Yes. So now if they wanted one thing throughout this competition is to, is to meet Nigeria again. again. And now they have not only the chance to do that, but they have it in the finals at of their home. championship at home with a packed out stadium. stadium. That's going to be difficult. I man. think our trumpets that day, I don't think ba, ba, na, 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 I don't think they will But you know, for, for, for Nigerians, we, we always, we've always been known to be fighters. Mm. Yeah, so I, right now, the confidence I have, and I'm not even there, I believe the players have more. They should just do their thing. I believe in the defenders. I could see the the way um, Ekong was screaming today when anyone makes a mistake. I think finally in, 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 in years now, we've not had that captain that, you know, that is like Sunday only said. Back in the days, that literally screams at everyone. Shout out now, to now Ekong. Shout out to my brother Taye. He called me up and he said, "Ekong is actually throwing his hat into the ring." Yes, as arguably one of the best ever defenders, defenders we've had. Defenders we've had, yeah. Because the way he's carried himself throughout this competition, not only the leadership qualities, mm. but also the way he's controlled the back the line, back line, the last ditch tackles he has yes. made at times when it looked like we were. This was going to be mm -hmm. a goal against us. And how he took on a penalty at a crucial time during the match, he has put himself firmly above a lot of people into a position where we're going to... And if he does lift the cup on Sunday, it will be very difficult to argue against him as being one of the greatest we've ever be, had. It will, be, it will be a very good opportunity for him too because right now, I believe all the top clubs... We'll be we'll looking be, to bring we'll him. We'll be looking to bring him. 100 percent And that's one thing I've always said about the AFCON. It's an opportunity to opportunity showcase to your showcase talent. Showcase your talent. And this is why I don't like when players go there and just feel and don't do, and their, don't best. do their best. It's not all about playing for your clubs and earning the money. But the respect Econ has end now. And telling from someone who never really grew up in Nigeria. Hmm. Trust me, he's a king in Nigeria now. Anytime he visits. Uh, and the endorsement go plenty. Go plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so, Ivory Coast, watch out for us. We are coming. Finals on <laughs> Sunday at the Afcon Championships 2023 in Ivory Coast, Nigeria versus the Ivory Coast. It's going to be incredible. We'll be watching that live at live. the Flow Ballers podcast here at the Enish Studios in Central London, Enish Covent Garden, to yes. be exact. Uh, my name is Adi Shopoy Olajide, my brother DJ Walls. Until next time, make sure you catch us. Right here on Footballers Podcast. Let's get into this yam and hot pepper sauce yes. before it gets too cold. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>